the company. I just had to teach management, hey guys, you're in a different country. If you want to be successful in China, you have to act as a Chinese bit. In China, the little kids, the little babies are, are taught, you have to respect your parents. You have to respect your ancestors. You have to respect your village. You have to respect your teacher. You have to respect your government people. Now in the West, we are taught from when we are very small, when we are born, you have to be the best. You have to be the fastest. You have to be the most beautiful. You have to. In China, we don't have teenage problems. problems. Now, the moment the ID came, the same moment was decided, and the same moment we looked to implement it. This speed is incredible. Um, some of them even asked me, "Hey, uh, I need to have a Western management." System. style system in order to cope with this crisis i said no forget it it will not help you at all welcome back to bless his world i have my man here mr philip uh, he's a virgin living in China over 20 years and I think he stands in a better position to tell us five things he like about China. He has been living here for a long time so there must be things that he like about this country. Sir, yeah, that, that. I think you are more Chinese than a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> Can you know. tell us five things you like about China and why yeah. you like those things? That's a very big challenge you give me now. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, I try. All right. Number five. Number five, right. Respect for history, respect for, in the past, those philosophical thinkers, uh, you know, like Confucius, like Lao Tzu, like Mao Zedong. Um, and it's not just in the university, it's not just in the classes they talk about that, but you can see that in the daily life, people still think about those people. Right. People still, um, they have a lot of expressions, they call that idioms. But you can be sure uh, one out of four or five expressions they say today come from those previous thinkers. Right. This is, this is incredible how those Chinese people carry their history with them. Okay. That's my number five. Number, five. number four, to set up a business as a foreigner. Um, um, it's enormously, of course, as a foreigner, you just do not start some kind of business. Right. Uh, you have to do good quality. You have to do good service. You have to be the top. Even if you think some, if you take some business from your own country and bring it here, even in your own country with this product, you have to be the top. And, uh, but from then, the the respect you get for people, the the appreciation you get for people, and our target is not to to sell huge amounts because we are only two people. Right. Uh, to do the business uh, if we would sell too much we would not be able to follow that would not be but our target is that the people leave the room with a smile on their yeah, face please. and as a foreigner if you do a business in china and you focus on having them smile when they go out then you will be successful because you have to know chinese people are very social people social media and family and so on when they go out with a smile you can be sure that they tell at other least people. 10 other people right this the story the happy story that they have been here right even if they didn't buy anything they they create the, the circle number three the the chinese management models um, you have to know i have three university degrees okay an engineer an economics and I've done a Master of Business Administration, MBA. Right. Now, during the MBA, uh, we had to do a paper, and I, I made the paper, look, I took 50 management models from the West into China and tested them with local Chinese, 100% Chinese companies, and with the Chinese owners. And 60% of those Western management models didn't work in China. China. So what is the nice thing about that is that China has its own All management models, which are completely different um, in, 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 in all aspects. Uh, 
Shall I give some examples or? Yeah, you can. For instance, a SWOT analysis. SWOT is strength, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. In the West, we use that a lot to analyze what is good at our company and what is bad in our company. Right. And then what is the opportunity or what is the threat? In China, you can absolutely not do that. You cannot say to a company owner what is bad in his company because then the owner loses face. Yes. Mm. And when the owner loses face, he loses power from his people. So you cannot talk about the weaknesses, but you have to, you know, but they have a kind of a, of a, of a management system in which the weaknesses are so much isolated that it doesn't affect your business. Um, this, this is very difficult to, to put into words, um, to, to explain to people. Um, you have to be in a, in, a, in a Chinese company. You know, I had uh, in 2008, a financial crisis. Um, then the Western companies didn't have money anymore. They didn't buy products from China anymore. And they also did not invest in China anymore. So a lot of Chinese companies got into problems. First of all, cash flow problems. Um, um, so then they called me in, they knew me. Before that, I was moving factories from Europe and America to China, and those company owners knew me. And they called me in. Um, um, some of them even asked me, hey, uh, I need to have a Western management system. style system in order to cope with this crisis. I said, no, forget it. It will not help you at all. You need just to strengthen your Chinese management structure. Uh, for instance, a factory at that time was only factory of the world. You know, the, China was factory of the world, just producing, producing, producing. They were sitting at a fax and the fax came in from Belgium and then produce, produce, produce. That was all what they were doing. But that didn't work anymore. So they had to, to do a restructuring. Then I told them, hey guy, you need your own products. You need your own research and development. You need your own sales. You need your own marketing. You need your own brand. You need your own sales channel, whatever. Um, but you need to do it with the people you have. In, in the West, when they want to set up a project like that, then they say, okay, I need a new marketing system. I hire a marketing specialist. I hire an R&D specialist. In China, that doesn't work. You have to work with the people because the people, they are family. They are the friend or they are some people from government, yeah. you know, the Guanxi, the network and so on. And you have to do it with those people. And you cannot touch those people because if you touch those people, you touch the heart of the company owner. So with, with people of which you say technically they're not competent, but still you have to set up a, a, a new kind of company and it works like hell I think. number two the speed and the efficiency of restructuring um, also I have a very good example of our own chocolate shop um, uh, I retired when I was I was lucky to, to be able to retire early because I had done a very good job as a consultant and I was 55 and then we said, hey, what shall we do? And we started to travel. But I have traveled a lot in my life, 37 countries already. But I, I did it for my wife, for her it was new. And I still remember very well the first time we went to Huangshan, Yellow Mountains. And the first day she was so enthusiastic. And the second day she said, hey, it's the same as yesterday. <laughs> we go home. And I tell you, the third day we went home. So traveling was not our thing. So we tried to find something else. And then we were in Belgium for Christmas. Uh, and then uh, we were walking in, in a very nice city, Bruges. Very nice city where each street has three or four or five chocolate shops. And we were walking there and try a little bit of the chocolates. And then my wife said, I know what we will do in China. We will do a chocolate shop. Now, the moment the idea came, the same moment was decided and the same moment we looked to implement it. This speed is incredible. 
you don't you don't need a scientific analysis you don't need a research if the business would be good or whatever whatever you speak from the heart and you say i want to do this and if you really want to do this and then you also learn the the technologies to do a good product a good job then you automatically are successful right so so they don't have they don't use the IQ. IQ, sorry, IQ. they don't use the IQ to decide on a business. They use the EQ to decide on a business. And they are successful. I tell you, it works. So we go to number one. Number one. Your number one, your <laughs> top number one thing you like about living in China. The people. The people. The people. It's, it's unbelievable. Um, my first cultural shock in China was, uh, that was that first week I was here. Uh, almost 21 years ago we were at the table dinner having a nice dinner and so on and then uh, there was a company owner of quite a big uh, company uh, she was a woman she had lived uh, at 12 years in America her son was born in America but she returned to China for the family All right. and she started her own business and that very quickly boomed into a big factory um, so we were talking a little bit, friendly talk, and then she said, my, wife, my son is, uh, is 11 years old, and then I said, oh, very soon will come the adolescence, the teenage problems. She says, Philip, in China, we don't have teenage problems. We don't have adolescents. Now, for me, that was the first cultural shock I had. Well, why not? In America and Europe, they all have it. Right. And it is right. I see that now all over China, they don't have culture, they don't have adolescence problems. Why is that? It is because of um, uh, the education of the people. You know, uh, in education, the, the people, um, how, how would you say this? Um, why do we live? What is the purpose of our life? What shall we do with our life? So at the end of our life, you can say, hey, we have done some good mm. or we have done bad. Mm. Now in the West, we are taught from when we are very small, when we are born, you have to be the best, you have to be the fastest, you have to be the most beautiful, you have to be the, the first in the class, you have to, mm, that's competition thing. Yeah. But that makes that when those kids are 13, 14 years old, that say, hey, my, my parents are stupid. I'm the best. You know, that this competition thing also comes back into the cultural aspect. Mm -hmm. In China, the little kids, the little babies are, are taught, you have to respect your parents. You have to respect your ancestors. You have to respect your village. You have to respect your teacher. You have to respect your government people. There are about seven levels. I, I, I'm, maybe I may forget some. Yeah. But they are taught to, to show respect. So yes, they don't have teenage problems. Um, my second culture clash um, was also the same period. You know, a company needed to restructure. You know, financial problems and so on. That happens. Um, I had done crisis management as a consultant mm -hmm. before in Europe, and in Europe they say, Philip, whatever you do with the people, I don't care. But I need to make profit and this much profit. <laughs> Then I do my first project in China, and then the owner says, look, we need to have profit. You can do whatever you want, but you don't touch my people. Because they are my family. They are not really family related, but because of working together, being together and so on, he considers them as family. to be the family. Right. The same heart, the same people. It also works. Uh, as I already told you in, in some examples of, of some restructurings to do. Um, but that was my second cultural class, which I learned very quickly that the Chinese, Chinese people are completely different people than, than, uh, than the West. So uh, in all, the f best thing you like about China are the people. Yes, by far. Um, yeah, for, for, uh, a very good example. I worked for a Western company in China who made losses. They wanted to close the factory uh, because 
the losses were too big, um, but they gave me a last chance to see if I could save it. Because for them, it was very nice to have the supplies from China into Europe. I went in, into that factory, and there was a Western management and Chinese people. The first moment I saw this was a clash between the, the Western culture and, and the Chinese, Chinese culture. The managers who were competitive and the people who were warm-hearted. That doesn't match us together. No. So I didn't have to restructure the company. I just had to teach management, hey guys, you're in a different country. If you want to be successful in China, you have to act as a Chinese. You have to manage the people in a Chinese way. So they learned that, they learned that. Um, I must say, I was very surprised. Although um, it was financial, of course, if, if it, that project would not have been successful, they would all have lost their job. Right. Uh, so they didn't want to, that as well. So they, they were open to learn and to at least try whatever I say. Six months later, I tell you, six months later, the factory was break even. Wow. One year later, the, the factory was the most profitable of the whole group of companies. Wow. And that only because the managers started to treat the people as people in a Chinese way. And then the people became so happy that they did whatever they want. The, the, the company needed to be profitable. This is so incredible. This is so unbelievable that, that um, how, how Chinese people have, have such a, such a, a, a culture. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for sharing your <laughs> five things you like about China. Thank you so much, sir. I'm glad. My pleasure. <laughs> Thank My you so much.